All right, let's talk about money. All right, so this uh, lecture is going to focus on compound interest. All right, there's two main formulas that you're going to be responsible for knowing. All right, so let's talk about the two main formulas. All right, the little letter T is going to represent years. Okay, so after T years, the balance capital A in an account with principal P, all right, the principal is what we put down, all right? That's the, the one-time amount we put in, say, to a savings account or a CD, all right? And annual interest rate, little r, in decimal form, guys, so we're going to have to go to the decimal, is given by the following two formulas. If we want to compound the interest, all right, at different periods per year, so maybe monthly, all right, n would be 12, all right, so here uh, we see our compounding uh, interest. All right, again, if we say monthly, n would be 12. If we say quarterly, n would be 4. What if we said weekly? How many weeks are there in a year? 52. So n would be 52. What about daily? All right, this is what your credit card companies do. All right, well, daily is 365. And then we could go, let's start thinking bigger. We could go hourly, right? Or by the minute, by the second, by the millisecond, by the nanosecond. And so you can see we're getting close and close to something that's called continuous compounding. And for continuous compounding, we're going to use the little e button, all right, that we've already talked about, the natural base E, all right, so notice in formula 2, which we'll sometimes call PERT, all right, there is no N because it's continual compounding, compounding continuously, nonstop, okay, and so here we only need the interest rate and the, the amount of years that we're compounding, okay, so what about, what would T be if I gave you, say, six months? Well, T has to be in years, so you can't use six. Exactly. You would use 0.5, since six months is half of a year. All right, let's work through a couple examples. A sum of 10000 is invested in an annual rate of 8%. Find the balance in the account after five years subject to quarterly compounding. All right. Well, plug and chug math at its best, guys. All right, so we know quarterly, there are four quarters in a year, so N is going to be four. All right, we take our formula. All right, we know P. All right, P is 10,000. R is 0 0.08. All right, make sure you know how to go from percents to decimals. All right, percents are like cents. If you had eight cents, that would be 0 0.08 of a dollar. All right, and N is 4 and T is 5. So we plug this into our formula. And again, the only way you can miss this is with order of operations. All right, so to do it piecewise, we are going to get this number right here. All right, and let me grab my calculator. And I get 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 4. All right, so what's in parentheses is 1.02. All right, and we also need to get this multiplication. Well, what's 4 times 5? It's 20. All right, so we have 10,000 times 1.02 raised to the 20. All right, and to get this answer, again, we need to be careful. We need to do 1.02 raised to the 21st, okay? And what we're going to end up doing is 10,000 times, and I am getting 1.4, that's a dot, 1.4859 and some whole bunch more decimals. All right, so and that we multiply 10,000 times this 1.4859 and we're getting approximately $14,859.47. Make sure on these problems you always round to cents.
All right, that's what makes sense to us. No pun intended. Ha ha ha. All right, so the balance of the account after five years, subject to quarterly compounding, will be this $14,859.47. All right, what about the sum of $10,000 when it is invested at the same rate for the same time, but now under continuous compounding? Well, con when you read the word continuous, when you read this word continuous, you need to think PERT, okay? And so P again is 10,000. We're gonna use our little E button on our calculator. The rate is 0.08 and the time is five years. All right, again, the first thing I'm going to do is 0 0.08 times 5, and I get 0 0.4. All right, so I have the 10,000 times E to the 0 0.04. Okay, and the next step I need to do is E raised to the point 0.04, all right? And so I have 10,000 Oh, I don't know why I said 0.04. I'm sorry, it's 0.4. It's like this is not this is impossible. All right. So we have e raised to the point 0.4. Sorry about that, guys. And we get something similar to what we saw on the last slide, not quite, but very, very close, 1.49182, and again, a whole bunch more decimals. And so we calculate that, and we get $14,918.25. Okay, so notice we're making a little bit more money the more frequently we compound. All right, so after five years with continuous compounding, we get $14,918.25. Recall, with quarterly, it was $14,859, so it's certainly a better deal for us when it's our money that's growing. We want more frequent compounding, okay? If we owe money, if we've borrowed money, then we don't want to ever compound it.